Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today. I think it took longer than 25 years to get here. Uh, because if you look at the original, this was the earliest picture I could find, but I grew up in New York City. I live in Los Angeles now. And my dream was to be a photographer. I roamed all around the streets of New York, taking pictures growing up and, and hanging out in my dark room and riding my bike downtown to uh, pick up chemicals and paper and ride my bike back up to the Upper West Side. I wish there was a picture, but I don't have it. But lifelong a photographer, so it's like, if I was an opera singer and I was invited to be at the Met, well, I'm a photographer and I'm at B&H. <laughs> so this is the epitome, this is the, the greatest day of my life. And to have all of you here at the greatest camera store in the world, right? <laughs> There's nothing like it anywhere else I've ever been. So it, they've got everything you could possibly want here. And I work at USA Today, as David said, and I have been doing these videos for the last five years. It's called Talking Tech and Talking Your Tech. It's two different shows. Uh, they run Wednesday and Thursday. I produce about five videos a week, uh, even because I do multiple videos in, in the program. Every, every calamity that could happen, I, I've suffered through. I work on the lowest, lowest budget. Uh, and so I could tell you how to make these things. Uh, as David said, we all have video cameras in our pocket. More people have video cameras than at any time ever. Uh, and we're making a lot of really bad videos. Some people are making good videos. A lot of people are making really shaky, jerky videos with terrible sound. And may maybe today we'll come up with some ways not to do that anymore. I'm here to talk to you about what I do and hopefully take your questions and help you make better productions and learn more about video. Um, OK. So this morning, I interviewed the director, Edward Burns. That's at uh, the Trebekah Room or something, at the Trebekah Theater in uh, near so uh, Trebekah, right? Not Soho. He made a movie last year for $9,000 and was very proud. He's a very, very, very low budget filmmaker. I'm going to talk to you about how to make movies for nothing. But he makes movies. This last movie was a year ago, Newlyweds, was $9,000. How he did it, he shot, he bought him, he came to B&H, he bought a Canon 5D Mark II, a 24 millimeter lens, a 50 millimeter lens, an 85 millimeter lens, so that's what he used. He bought audio recorders for all of his cast, and they all had an audio recorder and a microphone sticking up, and they used available lighting. They didn't even buy a tripod, so it was handheld, and they told all the actors to wear their own clothes. So that's how he made a low budget production. We can do that too. Uh, if you want to wear your own clothes, you'll wear your own clothes. Yeah, you don't you don't need to demand a wardrobe person, or makeup. You're okay with that. So, low budget. Um, everyone's a star. Everybody can get into show business now. When I was growing up and riding my bike down downtown to pick, to Spiritone, actually, anybody remember Spiritone? Yes. Hey, okay, that's where I bought my cheap D76. Uh, so. There were barriers, there were, there were obstacles. I, you couldn't break in unless somebody would let you. Now, there are no obstacles. The internet is open to everybody. You can, we can make a video right now and we can put it on YouTube. Whether anyone will find it is another story. But if it's really good, it will rise to the top. And people are being discovered online all the time. Justin Bieber, who is what, arguably the number one pop star right now, right? YouTube sensation, started on, started on YouTube out of Canada, was discovered on YouTube. So, and just so you know, YouTube, my mother is a YouTube star, okay? My mother is 76 years old. She has her own channel, How to Knit Videos. She's got seven and a half million viewers. And her real estate taxes are paid every year from the money she makes from YouTube, uh, which is about a little bit more than Edward Burns spent on the production for Newlyweds. So why did I write this book, Video Nation, which five lucky people may get to buy today? <laughs> Six? Hope Maybe we can get it up to 11 if we can find the other box. <laughs> so I wrote this book. What am I doing? You got it? OK. 11 books today. All right. So I wrote this book because I have a, fr first of all, I, you know, as I said, I, I do the Talking Tech series. I've been making these videos for five years on no budget. 
on one man band productions. I've done a lot of them by myself, one man band, you understand, that's, that's where I set up the camera, I run into the camera, I set the sound, I do everything. I also now work with an assistant, makes it a little easier, but I can do it by myself if I have to. So I've done that, and my friend Richard calls me, actually Jeff Coulter, he called me. Jeff Coulter called me, and he said, I want to be like you. And I want to make videos like you do, right Jeff? Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. <laughs> and uh, he said, tell me about lighting, tell me about sound, what kind of camera should I buy? Uh, how do I put it on YouTube? How do I save the video? Well, how do I title the video? Uh, what do I have to do? So I decided to write the book for Jeff. It was a year ago. Right, Jeff? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, you're very welcome. Um, uh, do we have any small business folks in here today, or do we have a lot? Okay, so we have a small business. Two, and who's everybody else? Do we have uh, just folks who are interested in video? Do we have people who work in school? Do we have insurance? What? I'm just going to do a trip uh, overseas on a medical mission, and I need to know something about video because they're going to want a video when I'm done. Okay, so we have a travel video. What other types of video we want to make? Uh, video like a skit. Uh, so you like talk to your grandfather, talk yeah, your exactly. interviews? Okay, great. Can I do animation? Animation. Okay. Not as good on animation, but. Uh, but it's not, uh, we'll, we'll try, we'll try. What else, what else are we doing? We have travel, legacy. Event videos for nonprofits. What's that? What's that? Event videos. Event videos? Okay, so that would be like a documentation of a party? Yeah, or a festival or, or, or documentary. Documentary? So, okay, all right, so um, free, you know, it's for the small business, YouTube, video, Vimeo, once upon a time, you paid a production company lots of money to produce an ad for you. And then you paid a TV station even more money to run it, right? How would you like the front row, sir? <laughs> now you don't have to do that. Anybody can put their video onto YouTube. You can do a 30 second video, you can do a three minute video, you can do a five minute video. I directed this commercial for a little restaurant called Good Stuff, which is in, in California. And um, we, we ran it as 28 seconds because he's running it on TV. But there's backstories videos. There's, uh, you know, they're, they're telling a little story. Basically, the story is what happens when the in laws come over? What are we going to do with them? I know. Let's bring them to Good Stuff where all, all times are good and the food is great. Well, we get to meet her in the, in the outtakes. We meet her husband in the outtakes. We do the bloopers. There's all these other things that you can put on YouTube and keep it, keep yeah. the commercial going, okay. uh, which is great. You we never had that opportunity before. And for small business, you know, you, you can do it on your own. You can hire a production company to make it look a little better, or you can learn how to do it and save yourself a bundle and get lots of free exposure, which I know people love to get, right? Um, so that's that. Uh, the challenges are sound, lighting, and steadiness. How many of us have seen those videos online? <laughs> you know, I don't know why, you know, we've got a lot of great microphones here, I'm sorry, a lot of great tripods here at, at B&H. Go downstairs, pick yourself up a tripod. If you're going to be shooting on the iPhone, there's a $10 attachment for this. Goes right in, sticks on a tripod, and there's a lot of them. Uh, and, it, it, you know, so there's no excuse for not having a tripod. Uh, particularly if, if you're doing an interview with somebody, you don't want to, you don't want to steady, you, know, you don't want to be a shaky shot. Okay. Um, lighting is a challenge, uh, but the, you know, uh, particularly if, if you are going to shoot with the iPhone, uh, you have to move this camera until you get the optimum spot. So like for right now, if I was going in this direction, it would be horrendous. If I go this direction, it would be terrific. Uh, it's just simple, you just move around until you get it right. Window light is your best friend. If you can light somebody by the window, from the window, that's the best kind of lighting you're gonna get, the softest, prettiest light, as us photographers know, right? Okay. Sound is also the other, other big deal. I, if we're gonna shoot low budget on an iPhone, uh, I recommend this is sort of your best bet, better than a point and shoot camera because there are a lot of microphones that fit right in here because of the popularity of the iPhone. There are a lot of attachments. I don't know of any of attachment for a, a point and shoot camera. Now the biggest myth of getting into video is that it's going to cost you a fortune to make the videos. 
Edward Burns made a movie for $9,000. I made the Good Stuff commercial for a lot less than that. There was no thousands involved. <laughs> okay? There was like shh, nothing. Uh, you know, get some friends to be in it, bring your gear, and you're in pretty good shape. We can all do it. It's just, uh, do you want to take the time to do it? Uh, I want to take the time to do it. I have a better time doing it when I'm doing it. I don't want to farm it out. I like to edit my videos. I wouldn't want somebody else doing it because it's my, my vision and I want to see it through. Uh, Edward Burns, by the way, from this morning, he doesn't edit his videos. He says he doesn't have the talent or the patience to do it. Well, we all have the talent and patience. We just have to sit and try something. I interviewed this banjo player last week. He's the greatest banjo player. Could I play like him? Today, I can't. If I really put my mind to it, I can. If I really want to do it, I could do it. I don't think I have the patience to do it, but I could do it. It's like all of you could be great video makers if you want to do it. YouTube, as we talked about Justin Bieber, iJustine has millions and millions and millions of people watching her stuff. She, uh, as Jeff knows, right? <laughs> Jeff happens to be one of the world's biggest iJustine fans. Um, I hope I didn't embarrass you for that. No, she's more fan of me, so it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're okay. So, so she's one of the YouTube stars. Now, you know YouTube, when you put your work on YouTube, they, if you get an audience, they repay you by giving you half of the ad revenues. So I Justine makes a living putting videos on YouTube. That's all she does all day long. And she, when I first met her, she recorded her work in that little Canon point and shoot which was unbelievable, and she does great work. But so what, what makes a great YouTube star? Passion, energy, uh, devotion. And you go, go ahead. They put ads on the video. If you get an audience, they will, they will put ads. It's called AdSense, Google AdSense. And they pay over 50% of, of the ads, of, of the revenue. That's how my mother gets her real estate money from Google AdSense. And there's nothing, you know, they, you just put them out there and you hope that people will tune in. How to monetize, AdSense. That's my mother's uh, knitting, knitting channel. It's called Knitting Tips by Judy. 7.5 million views to her videos over the last two years. Um, and 15,000 uh, 15, subscribers, well, almost 16,000 subscribers. She makes the, the, um, the cheapest, uh, low budget low, you know, uh, videos. She won't take any of my advice. Uh, she won't even use a microphone, but she does have a um, she does have a uh, a, um, a tripod, which is good. Could I yeah, go ahead. Okay, and I'll go into it in more detail. But you put your stuff on YouTube, and once you start bringing in an audience, you apply to to get the AdSense added to your account, and it doesn't take much. And then they will just start putting ads on your videos. When you reach another level and you start getting more, more viewers, you get to join the Google Partners Program, the YouTube Partners Program. <sighs> uh, thousands? Yeah. Uh, hundreds of thousands is better. But the Partner Program will then give you a bigger cut of the ads. And, and when you get even bigger, then you get to sell the ads yourself, which I don't know if you want to do. But uh, a lot of these YouTube stars sell the ads themselves and you get even more money. So uh, I was interviewed last week by a guy, and the last question of the interview he wanted advice. OK, now that you've talked talk, talk to me about video, where do we go from here? Uh, what, you know, if you want to go to the next level, my advice is to watch. You know, uh, for me, the best videos that I've ever seen are on 60 Minutes, Rock Center, and any of the news magazines. They do a beautiful job with their photography. And that's what I look to. If you're doing uh, legacy videos, I'd watch other legacy videos. If you're doing event videos, I'd watch other event videos. How are they doing it? How can I make mine like theirs? And how can I take mine to the next level? I'd, I'd like to start off with a quick little video that I did on the iPhone and the iPad. At Peachpit in Berkeley, California. On the black, on the black chairs. Uh, yeah, yes. you're the one in the hot seat now. You're usually interviewing people, and I get the chance today. So, so this is Author yeah. Talk, folks uh, at home, and we're, we're going to be talking about a brand new book called Video Nation that Jefferson has just written. I talk about how to improve their video skills. There's a lot of tools out there that they can buy that will not break the bank. Now, first of all, people should know 
I, my shot's on an iPad today. I'm being shot on an iPad, you're being shot on an iPhone, and uh, we have a, a crazy Surrounded little- Surrounded by we three have a, cameras a, 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 a here. We first met Flipboard on the iPad, where it was a smash hit. And when it moved to the iPhone as well, it just seemed right to do the interview on the popular mobile device. To pull it off, I needed to mount the iPhone, which I did with my handy $10 iPhone tripod mount, and that put the iPhone atop a tripod. Then I inserted a $30 cable to plug my lav microphone into the headphone jack on the iPhone. Um, I'm not necessarily against technology, but I think people should cut down a little bit because... For this demonstration of DIY lighting, we stopped over to the Home Depot to pick up three clamp lights and bulbs. Okay, now one of our treasured guests here watched my James Taylor interview, and I'm going to talk about this for a second. I did this interview in Denver during the summer, and let me just expand that for one second. Um, I work for USA Today. USA Today is owned by Gannett. Gannett owns a TV station in Denver. Uh, I arranged to do an interview with James Taylor about his online guitar lessons, and the TV station said they would shoot it for me. Well, the night before, there was this little Batman movie that opened up in Aurora, Colorado. You've heard about that. And I got a, a text at 3 a.m. in the morning saying, sorry, bets are off. And so I then, USA Today said, as long as you're there, go interview some hospital victims. Thank you very much. So I went to the hospital. And I didn't know what I was going to do about the shoot. And I met a woman there who was stringing for the Today Show. And I said, you wouldn't happen to have a camera, would you? And she said, yeah, I got a camera. I said, could you come to my interview with me, help me out? So she came with me, and I had brought a zillion uh, point and shoots and GoPros and a whole bunch of other cameras, and we put them all over the room, and this is what we got. Hello. <laughs> we met the legend. Well, I'll show you this one. Right? Yeah. We James Taylor in a hotel suite to discuss his online guitar lessons. So it seemed like a good idea to bring along my guitar. We began the session by tuning up our guitars, and we actually spent quite a time okay. doing that to make sure that we were in sync. Okay. Let's play a G chord to make sure that I'm playing the same G chord you are. About midway through the interview, we started with some songs. The first, Fire and Rain, didn't go very well. That's like a D. So, that's right, that's one way to play it. You've got a friend, just a little better. I'm out of tune. Out of tune right here with James Taylor. Well, me too, I'm out too. How was that? Is that That's, okay? It's great. It's a lovely version of the song. But, but, missing, it, um, right. but I'm doing the same key, but you're playing it in A fingering, right. and I'm playing it in G fingering, which is a lot, it's a really easier way to play the song. I mean, you gotta, I'm going to go back you to questions. Take my word I'm going to go back to questions. <laughs> Got a friend right here, right. James Taylor. Finally, with Shower the then People, you, we started to, to get in sync. That B minor. I'd be playing Share of the People with you. 
Things are gonna be much better if you only will <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, so that's my summer highlight with James Taylor. Question. Yeah, I hear a question. So where were the microphones that picked up the two guitars? Uh, we were wearing them. At least. Yeah, they were labs. <laughs> they were right on us. Uh, they do a pretty good job with the guitars, believe it or not. Uh, so it's like I have a lab right here. You know, lab everybody knows where a lavalier microphone is? Yeah, so I was wearing mine and he was wearing his. And that's how we picked it up. But so that was all sorts of different cameras. I had two GoPros on both sides. I had a, an Olympus point and shoot over here. And I think I had a Samsung point and shoot over here. And I had my 60D, which I, a Canon 60D, which I had brought with me. And then she had a, uh, an old tape, oh, a tape Sony video camera. Remember those? Uh, I, do you guys, you guys don't even sell those anymore, do you? I don't think. Right? So, so th then the question was, how am I going to get it into my computer? And uh, so I had to go pick it up from her the next morning. Because we've gotten also used to just taking the cards out and you stick them right in. And it's really changed a lot. When I started shooting with the, vi the video cameras with the tape, and you shoot for an hour, and it would take an hour to transfer it. And you hope that it all went through. So speaking of gear, and I will get the story. The uh, biggest question I've gotten for the, the last 10 or 15 years is what kind of camera do I need? Uh, what kind of camera should I buy, right? Everybody always asks that question, and I always come back, well, what do you want to shoot? What do you want to do with it? Uh, so for the purposes of today, we're talking about for video. Uh, what the event person and the small, well, the event person and the legacy person, I, I think, are going to use something different than the small business person. though. You could do the legacy on the iPhone if you wanted to. And you saw what, what that iPhone video looked, and it looked pretty good. And that was just having it with the decent lighting and having it on, on a tripod. You could certainly do the interviews with that. You might run out of, out of, out of memory, but you could do it that way. Um, but let, let's go over the, the basic type of cameras. We'll start with some point and shoots. Uh, they used to be prevalent. I don't think they're as prevalent as they once were because the, the, the iPhone has become, everybody, everybody's got it in, in their pocket, and if it's not the iPhone, it's an Android. And uh, so the point and shoot cameras have actually, the sales are like down 30% this year. Uh, but everybody in this room has a point and shoot, right? And it probably shoots really, really nice video. The problem is there's no way to plug, it, plug sound in. The iPhone, as I said, it's always with us. So it's sort of the easy thing to do. You, the lighting, you just have to have good available light. Shooting in, in a room like this would be hard unless you guys have really nice LED lights on your ceiling. Can I get a show of hands? How many people have LED lights on the ceilings? I, that's what I thought. Uh, the iPad, the new iPad has the same camera as the iPhone. And it's, it's just as good, it's, as I say, it's the same. You could also buy a tripod mount for an iPad. It's uh, usually used for sheet music. It's called the iClip. And it fits right in there. It sells for $40. P, uh, musicians like it to, you know, move the page. It feels a little awkward to walk around with, with a camera like this. But you can do it. Like What's that? It's like a cage. Yeah. Uh, remember the flip? That was a pretty good video camera. Unfortunately, it's out of production. Uh, so they don't make it anymore. And then Kodak said, well, we'll copy it. We'll make a good one. Well, they're not making theirs either. So Sony has one called the Bloggy. But again, no microphone input. So that's a problem. And oh, is there any others? Jeff, do you remember? Is anybody else making one of those? Uh, no, pretty much that yeah, so that format, so that's, you might as well shoot on the iPhone. Uh, but the beauty of that camera was that they said, you know, there's too many buttons on video cameras. People are confused. They don't know what to do. And so let's just make a camera with a record button on the back. And people loved it. But then they sold the company for 600, was it $500 million or something to Cisco. Cisco had it for four months and said, no, we don't like this business. We think we'll just get rid of it. And there it went. That's the bloggy I was telling you about from Sony. It's pretty much the only thing left in that format. But if you're going to spend $200, you might as well buy yourself an iPhone, I think. Video camera, remember those? Once upon a time, we liked to get the video camera. The beauty of the video camera was 
a really good long lens. You could, you know, I could shoot, where it says over there, speakers on the other side of the room. I could get a pretty good close-up of that. But that's about as, all I have to say for that, because the, the imaging chip is a 1 20th the size of what you would find in a, any DSLR, any SLR camera that shoots video, starting from a $500 entry-level Nikon or Canon, uh, 20 times bigger. Than, than you'll find in the video camera. And the image quality is just so much better. So that's another format that's sort of biting the dust. The, the nice thing about it is also the zoom. It has a steady zoom, which you can't get from shooting on a DSLR. But you can learn how to do it. So are you saying that the DSLR basically supplants any... Um, image quality. For image quality, there's no comparison. I, I did a shoot on Friday where I, I shot a guy in his living room and I just wanted to use a video camera and I didn't want to set up lights. I wanted to have him light by the window and it was kind of dark, it was raining, and it just looked terrible. And then I put in my, uh, my DSLR and it was like three times brighter. And it just it was night and day. So yeah, yeah I mean, you, know, you can shoot for longer on a video. When DSLR started, you could only shoot for 12 minutes. Now you can shoot for 30. 29.9. Change the format. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 29.9. <laughs> I was rounding it off. <laughs> okay. There's always somebody. Always somebody. Jeff, what's the entry level Nikon? The D3200? Yeah. Okay. $500? $600? Uh, 699 yeah. 699 You can get a great entry level Nikon that is uh, 1080p, 1080p HD. You could shoot for 30 minute clips. Yeah. 30 minute clips. And uh, Knock your socks off, and it's also Wi-Fi. How big an SD card do you need to put in to be able to get? At least it, 16 gig will give you an hour. 32 will give you two. Uh, and up from there. And up from there. Okay. Uh, always get the bigger, because yeah. you could always. Yeah. And they've gotten so cheap, you can get a 32 gig card for twenty dollars now. And you can shoot 50, 55 stills, and then do yeah. a movie, and then yeah. Um, cla the whole okay, thing class 10. It has to be a class 10 card or higher okay. because you need more, more, more speed for shooting video. But the price of memory has just gotten crazy. An affordable video camera, the, these are both $1,500 and up. The Sony, which is over here, takes interchangeable lenses. I've played with it and I, I, I can't see any reason to spend that kind of money on that camera when you can buy the Sony still camera for less money with the same imaging chip, and it's, you just got and, and you get great stills. Uh, the phot photographers of this generation that are get, that are growing up and, and they're not photographers. They are photographers and videographers. It used to be you're one or the other. No, nah, no more. When people hire you, they expect you to do both. I'm also you know I'm a photographer. I, I have a weekend ph photography business in California, and 90% of it is video and photos, and this is expected. And everybody is taking pictures now. You, you know if you're not doing video now, you will be in a year or two, because that's what that's what people are expecting. Is there an advantage to these uh, video cameras over the D? I mean, is there any advantage to them? Zoom. You can zoom in. You, you know the old, the old zooming in. But you could do that in, in your editing. And you could also buy a zoom. You could buy a zoom lens and, and learn how to do it slowly. But I'm telling you again, the image quality is just so much better. You, I think you could buy a $10,000 video camera and it would look pretty good. But you can't. you can't. I mean, I don't think anyone in this room is going to go out and buy a $10,000 video camera. I'll take a show of hands if anyone's planning on doing it. Anybody looking for the red? No. Yeah. Oh, we have a show of hands. She's going to buy herself a red. OK. Um, the SLRs, as I told you, best quality. And uh, just to run down the prices, that's the Mark III, which is, uh, for my money, the best camera for video and stills combined. But it's $3,500. The Nikon D600, which just came out, is $2,000. And there's not $1,500 difference. You know, a lot of it is, is are, am I comfortable with Nikon? Am I comfortable with Canon? Am I comfortable with Sony? What camera do I like to use? Uh, they're all converging. You can get amazing video on the Rebel, on the Canon Rebel, the entry-level Rebel. You can get amazing quality on the, on the 3200, on the Nikon. And you've got an LN, so you've got a great sharp, sharp little lens there. What do you have? Do you have a Mark III? Yeah. You have a Mark III or Mark II? Yeah. What's the difference between the Mark II and the Mark II? What's that? What's the difference between Mark II? Well, um, when you shoot video on the Mark II, it'll only go for 12 minutes. 
And when you shoot on the Mark III, you can shoot 29.9. <laughs> yeah. OK, so there's a guy holding an icon. What model is it, Jeff? Yeah. That's a real estate agent in Manhattan Beach who I interviewed for the book. He goes out and shoots his own videos every week. He does tours of the homes. And he says, hey, this is Ed. Come on in. Let me show you around. And he shoots it all himself. He doesn't have a production company. And he's all over YouTube. And guess what? People call him up, and they buy houses from him. And he's not paying a cent. He just bought himself a camera, and he got himself a little grip there. And he's doing a pretty nice job. Oh, what's going on today? So the biggest, the, the issue with shooting on DSLRs is focus. Biggest problem is, uh, first of all, you're, you're focusing on the, as, as my friend here knows, right? You're on the back of your LCD. You could be outside. It's a little hard to see. And you, and you set the camera. I set it here. I got a nice focus. And then I move it, and it doesn't doesn't move. I, you have to constantly adjust it. Some of the cameras won't adjust for autofocus. The Nikons have gone a little bit uh, towards making it better. The Sonys have gone a little bit towards making it better, but it hasn't totally gotten there yet. It's the biggest challenge. Uh, when you, Traditional filmmaking, they had focus pullers, and they did the focusing for them. The camera operator just moved the camera around. Somebody else focused it. And we just have to learn how to be better focusers. There's lots of great tools here to help you focus like a loop. You've all seen like the directors that go around with the thing around their neck? Yeah. yeah, it's a loop. You put it on the back of the LCD, and it magnifies it. So you, you can look through there, and if you're outside, you can see through there. I bought a great one here for $60 the last time I was here. I don't remember the model. Uh, but if you go see any of the folks out there in the loops, they'll, they'll, they'll show it to you. So we didn't talk about action cams, the GoPros. And, uh, the GoPro cameras, if you look on the top of my helmet, I've got three of them up there. I love the GoPro. Uh, do you guys, have you guys seen it? Well, I have one in there. You know what it looks like. It's a tiny little camera. It shoots amazing, amazing video. I walked around with Times Square a few weeks ago shooting everything. It shoots great in low light. It's a lot of fun, and I actually use it in every shoot I do. <coughs> Audio is a big issue when you're shooting video. As you know, you know how bad the camera is on the iPhone. I mean, the, the mic is on the iPhone, and how just the problems with sound. They put a, a one mic for all so it picks up everything and ends up nothing sounds very good. So you need a good mic. Whether it's a lav mic like I'm wearing right now, the reason I like talking about the iPhone is there's all these accessories. So that's the, the, the iRig mic cast. It sells for $50. It fits right into the iPhone or an iPod touch. And it's pretty good. It's not fantastic, but it's pretty good. Uh, what most people are, are doing right now are using audio recorders that are shooting on DSLRs. I use the Zoom H4n. Everything I do is on the H4n. I record the audio separately, and then I sync it together when I edit the video. Do you use uh, a separate lab mic on that? Yeah. I have two, two lab mics is for every shoot I do. Because it's generally me and somebody else they doing do an interview. Wired. I do wireless, but you can get decent uh, wired labs for $50 to $100. And so like for your legacy interviews, I would just get a wired lab. And I don't know if the interviewer should be in, in your videos, uh, if it's just, just talking head, if it's both of you, or if it's just one. Because uh, if, it, if it's just I'm interviewing this person and, and telling their story, then get a wired lab. And uh, if you bought, bought an SLR, they do have mic inputs. And you can get an, an attachment to plug it in there, or you can do the sound recording. I would shoot for the input in the camera because it's going to be easier for you when you edit. Question, when you record, do you record multiple channels into the Zoom? Yeah. Or you just, all right, all right. Yeah, two channels okay. uh, in the stereo. But the great thing is it's got, you could plug in two mics into the Zoom, and then they have these two mics up here that are um, external mics, and they're pretty good. I did an interview with two guys, so I had to ha uh, put mics on them, and then I wanted to mic myself, and so I just stuck it in front of me, and it sounded really good. Uh, but the best sound will come from a lav lapel mic, which I'm wearing right now and Margo is wearing, and uh, all, all shapes and sizes and prices. But that is your best bet. If you're inside, it's just going to get the voice. Even if you're outside, it'll be, do a pretty good job. Uh, when This is the worst mic I've ever used. <laughs> um, do you, any, anybody have any experience with the Rode mic? Tell me you don't work for Rode. Okay. Yeah. It's like nothing. It's like. 
yeah, $150, $200, and it won't do anything for you that's any better. And then it takes a, is it a D battery? Nine volt. Nine volt battery. You can't even get it in there with it correctly, and then it falls to pieces. Uh, I hate it. So I, that was money not well spent. Uh, you can buy a cable to plug a mic into the iPhone. Any mic, whether it's a handheld mic, whether it's your lab mic, go right in the iPhone. It sounds pretty good. I told you about the smartphone mics. <coughs> and you don't have to buy the Zoom if you don't have $250. You can buy the Tascam. You can buy the smaller Zoom, which will give you one channel sound. And uh, so you will just want to have any, any, as many inputs. Steadying the iPhone is very important. Um, I, I told, we talked about microphone. I'm sorry, we talked about um, tripods. The Gorilla Pod is something that's kind of fun. And then this is a little like brace thing. The iPod, iPhone is in there, and you stick it in there, and it gives you a, an external lens. Even if you don't put that in a micro, in, in a tripod, and there's slots right down there, just the, having that you can really steady the image and make it look a lot better. It's also $200. We talked about tripods. They come in shapes, all shapes and sizes. You can buy one for as little as $30. It'll be pretty wobbly. Uh, you know, so that's one of the problems when you buy a cheap tripod. But it will still be better than your hands. How many of us have, have you ever looked at somebody taking your picture and, and seen their hands like that? You know, you, you, can't, you, can't hold, you cannot hold it steady, no matter how good you think you are. We all get better as photographers over the years because we have experience and all sorts of tricks. But when you're shooting video like this, uh, where my, you know, I'm not holding it against my head like a camera, which can be steadier. It, you know, it just can't be done. And what 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 is acceptable at 250 of a second in, in a photo versus the video that's just running is, you know, night and day. What's going on with these pictures that aren't showing up? Well, anyway, we can buy lighting for the iPhone. Uh, this is something called the, the Clip, and it's a brace like the thing I showed you from Action Life Media, except it has a little LED that you can plug into it. It's $100. It's very overpriced, but it's in there. And if you can't do that, we can go really cheap on lighting. Anybody ever hear of the Home Depot? <laughs> yeah. So that's a Home Depot light. I bought three of them for $40 and just put some parchment paper over, over, over the, uh, the thing to soften the light. And you know, when, when in trouble, use your flashlight, which will go a long way as well. Uh, I wanted to show you a before and after shot of Sean to show you about window light and shooting in the shade. But unfortunately, you know how bad a picture outside with the raccoon eyes looks like, right? Well, that's what Sean looked like since the picture's not there. And that's just in basic shade. So that's, that's my lighting tip is always, always, always look for the shade when you're outside. It's the best form of available light. Right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, OK, so this is my Home Depot lights. And this is, can you see the three? We did three-point lighting on, on Heather. That's Heather with no lighting. That's Heather with lights. Um, and this, oh, it's in that. But um, downstairs, OK, the problem with the Home Depot lights when you get them is they're on clamps, and you can't really move them around, and they're flimsy and stuff. So our friends downstairs have these nicer clamps that are more bendable, and you can work with them more. This is $88.95, and it comes with two. Does this one come with two umbrellas? Well, the one I just saw downstairs before I came up here comes with two umbrellas. It was $100. That's a nice little setup, and that will actually do better than the Home Depot. So that would be great for your documentary. Uh, you know, you're not going to travel with those. But for, for interviewing somebody and you know, put two lights on both sides, it'll really do a nice job. Uh, not good for event photography, though. But for the small business video, it'll be pretty good. As I said, better with umbrellas. It's still cheaper downstairs at $109, but you get the idea. I use this Lowell Softbox. I love this thing. Uh, you know, for the, when I do the USA Today interviews, uh, it, sets up really, really, really fast. I, and I've tried the Westcott spider lights. Do you guys know those? Those are daylight balanced. And same thing, continuous light. You, what you see is what you get. 
but it takes a long time to put them together. And when I say a long time, I could be talking seven minutes. I don't have seven minutes sometimes. I got, you know, this morning when we interviewed Ed Burns, he just had this fantasy that we would just come in at 10.25 and set up and be, and be ready in five minutes. Well, it doesn't work that way. A lot of people ask me, they say, Jeff, who is your favorite interview you've ever done? And I always go to Kermit the Frog, in case you were wondering. Uh, he was witty, he was fun. I walked in the room, he was flat on the, on the table, and then he just came alive. And he let me play guitar with him and he sang a song. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, James Taylor, as you saw, was my other favorite. And I'm a guitar player, so I'm a huge fan of Pat Metheny, who's one of the jazz guitar greats. Do you guys know J Pat Metheny? Yeah, he was fantastic. Uh, ho ho, another picture disappeared. So I interviewed Louis Black last week. You guys know Louis Black, the comedian? Yes. Yeah, he was a riot. Uh, dream interview. This was like, this is the type of interview you, you always want if you're going to do interviews. Because in, you walk in, you sit down, you say, so Lewis, how's technology treating you? And then he does his act for 40 minutes. And I just sit there and laugh. So it was great. He complains about his Apple computer. And I say, have you considered going to see a Mac Genius, perhaps? And he goes, no, no, I wouldn't see a Mac Genius. Well, why not? They're not like us. <laughs> there were different species. Basically, the entire, I mean, everything was like that. So it was, it was really a lot of fun. Now, I took that interview, it was 40 minutes, and I cut it into seven pieces. So just little vignettes of him ranting about things. And we actually found a product that he likes, which was pretty amazing. It's the Galaxy S3. He loves that phone. After hating the Droid and hating the iPhone and, uh, and hating his Mac and hating his Windows computer and hating Facebook and hating Twitter, but he loves his Galaxy S3 because it's big. So it's like a real phone and I can talk on it. So that interview will run tomorrow. So check it out at tech.usaday.com. The worst interview of all time I ever did was with, believe it or not, Lady Soul. Aretha was like the what, huge get and it was fantastic. It was before I did, did the technology show. Uh, and I just went to, I was actually working for a radio program called Soundtrack of the 60s where I go in and ask about, about the 60s, and so I wanted to ask her about th this era, and she didn't want to talk about this era, she wanted to talk about her new album, her new album was nothing, it wasn't very good. I went through 40 questions in about 10 minutes, and I was out of there, and it was kind of disappointing, and, but anyway, and then a certain actor who shall go nameless, he walked in with an attitude, and I couldn't get him to stop the attitude, and I don't think I should say his name, being that they're going to run this on the YouTube channel. Uh, it wasn't Charlie Sheen, but he is on television. And uh, what he doesn't know, because he gave me attitude all the way through, is guess who's editing the video? <laughs> guess who's in control here, right? He didn't think about that. Right, so I'm taking out a lot of stuff in that video. OK, I think we're going to watch another clip. One of the issues with shooting video on the iPhone is that you can't adjust the exposure. There are no manual controls to go lighter or darker. See how I'm overexposed here? You know, there should be an app to solve this situation. There is, and it's called Filmic Pro, and it sells for all of $3.99 at the iTunes App Store. Compose your image in the app. You can't actually stop the lens down, but instead you drag the exposure box where you want the camera to go lighter or darker. Another nice bonus for the app you can lock in your autofocus settings, which you couldn't do otherwise. This is important so the focus won't change while you're shooting. The app isn't perfect, but if you shoot video on the iPhone, can you really afford to live without it? Okay, there's one, and let's see. Okay, so we're recording and we want to uh, focus on Sean on a Rebel. Rebel camera is a DSLR, it's just like, the, the focus, whole thing with the focus on this camera is the same as other DSLRs. You, you have to use manual focus because once you start recording, even if you're in autofocus, if anything moves or changes, the focus will go out, as you can tell from what Sean is doing. The magic here is this zoom in button. You want to zoom in. I thought that Sean was in focus, and, but he really wasn't until we focus on his eyes now. 
There we go. Okay. So we zoom in to focus on Sean's eyes, which are now in pretty good shape. And you can see we could blow it up twice just to confirm. Those are bloodshot eyes, Sean. You didn't get enough sleep last night. Um, now the other thing is we're shooting at 2.0 right now, which is, which is way too high because if, if Sean moves at all, um, he's going to go out of focus. So if you've got an interview subject that you think might be moving around a little bit and getting animated while they talk, you don't want to focus at your widest lens opening. Here we're at 1.4. That's where my eyes are. It gives you a nice ad sort of blurry background. But if I move forward, my eyes are going to be out of focus. So you want to stop the lens down to about f4, 5.6. 5.6 would be optimum. And then when I move forward, I'll, stay in, st I'll be in focus. So as I said, I've done a lot of one-man band shoots. Uh, where I, actually, I did one here in New York recently with uh, Michael Strahan, who is the new co-host of the Live with uh, Kelly and Michael show. It used to be the Regis and Kelly show, yeah. right? And they called me at 8 o'clock in the evening and said, be here tomorrow at 9.30. <laughs> well, I couldn't get anyone to help me, so I just went and did it. Put a, put a tripod, you know, we were sitting on the set, Put the tripod right here, so get a wide shot of us. And then, and I think I'm gonna go over this again, but then I put another camera over here so that when he's looking at me, I get a close up of him looking at me. And that's how I handled it. Um, okay, let's make a movie with the iPhone. Hey, here's my biggest iPhone tip. Don't shoot like this. Never shoot a movie on the iPhone like this. Do you know why? Big black lines on the side. But when you shoot like this, it's like a regular, regular, regular shot. You, so uh, you always want to shoot like this. I'm sorry, like that. This is my favorite app for videos, Filmic Pro, which you saw my little, little video about, because you can change the exposure. If the, with the iPhone, it's all automatic, uh, but it gives you manual, manual controls. You, dolly cam is great, but it's not showing up. A clapper board, we talked about editing and we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but in Final Cut, when you want to sync your stuff up, going back to the first days of movies, people had the clapper, so now you just use your clap so you, you can get that sound and you, you sync all your stuff to look for the sound. Shooting with DSLRs, tripod mounted, we talked about plugging the sound in directly. Uh, most, most DSLRs have the slot on the side to put in a microphone. Okay, shooting and editing. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of videos to make. The, the, the biggest one that you'll see online right now is interviews. It's the easiest thing. It goes back to the, the beginning of time. Uh, the earliest TV shows were interview shows. And parodies are all over YouTube. And I know you've seen baby, all those baby videos from Justin Bieber, right? You're a big Justin Bieber fan, right? No? Really? You, you prefer Psy? <laughs> okay. So it's, any hot music video has zillions of parody videos. Uh, any new Apple product has zillions of parody videos. Parodies are really popular online. And so the other, the other ones are advertorials. We talked about that, making your own ad online. The blog. Hey, this is Jeff, and to let me welcome you to my world. This is what I'm doing today. I'm just talking to the camera. That's a vlog, webisode, an ongoing story, and a tutorial. You see a lot of people doing tutorials. Um, I'm really good at Photoshop. Let me show you how to do some things, right? Uh, for interviews, the, the first question that comes up is let's get a guest. And how, yeah, that was one of my first ones. Pretty cool, huh? Start off with Mike Tyson. Yeah, so it's kind of fun. And then I got to go up to him and I said, come on. Just for the picture, though. Just for the picture. But I was in the dressing room with his wife. And it was great, because I said, tell me about him. What, what am I going to talk to him about? Because I, I had this technology show. I got to talk to him about his favorite tech stuff. And he said, he loves Google. He Googles stuff all night long while he's watching TV. Thank you. Yeah. And he never goes anywhere without his iPod. So anyway, booking. How do we get guests for our video show if you're doing interviews and you don't work for a national newspaper, but you've got your own blog? Well, the funny thing is that um, anybody can get a guest. You may not get the biggest guest, but you have a platform. Even if you have five people on your blog, you have a platform because 
let's say it's the restaurant. Let's say it's Joe's Pizza across the street. You want to go interview Joe? And Joe says, well, for your blog? Yeah, yeah, sure. So you interview Joe for your blog. You put it on your blog. Joe, Joe puts it on his blog. You put it on Facebook. Somebody sees it on Facebook, they put it on their Facebook. Then they put it on somebody else's Twitter. And it just goes and goes and goes and goes. And, and uh, now Joe's got publicity. You said in the video that Joe has the best pizza on 34th Street. And now in the ad, it says, Sus best pizza on 34th Street, Susie's blog. You know, I mean, it's, that's what I'm talking about. You know, anybody can do anything now. Anyway, so, so the first di thing about an interview is booking the interview and setting it up. And the next thing is choosing a location. So if we're doing Joe's Pizza, the obvious thing is we're going to interview him at the pizza parlor, right? Uh, hopefully uh, right behind the counter uh, with pizzas flying up in the air and stuff like that. So uh, normally I'd say it's, that's, that's going to be a tough one because of all the sound issues, but you want to interview Joe at the pizza parlor. So the, you, you want to have a good mic, have a good lab mic on him, and get there early. If I'm interviewing Joe, I'd say, what time do you open up? Can we get there the minute you open up before there's a crowd? Because there's always going to be people walking up and down. And it, that's kind of hard. But I try to be at least one hour early for every setup, just because it always takes time. Uh, no matter how easy the shoot is, it always takes time. I like to visualize the setup, just like we just talked through the Joe interview. I, I want to think, where am I going to shoot it right now in my mind so I know when I'm going in? Even better is if we can go check it out and, and then come back is better. I don't know if you, we have that opportunity. This is the Michael Strahan piece that I told you about. Where did we put the cameras? One straight ahead, looking at the both of us, and then one on the side, because I hate those shots. Do you guys like those shots when they, they, you see the person talking to them, and they're going like this? Or would you rather see them talking like this? I want to see them talking like this. So I try to put the camera where I can see their eyes. Two eyes. I do multi-camera shoots on, on my pieces. I usually use at least three cameras. Um, this, is, this is the classic three camera shoot because the, the master is looking at the, straight of, at both of us. And then there's one camera over here and one camera over here to get both of our close-ups. Yeah, go ahead. Is it, no, I know this should be like in, um, in a shop. Main, main subject, yeah. You included him in the shot. Yeah. But him, you didn't do right. I'm more concerned about Dr. Phil than I am with me. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, it just it just shows you that you're um, actually you're, you're actually there <laughs> with Dr. Phil, oh, and right. they gave a that was we waited for him for two hours, and then when they were finally ready, they said you had nine minutes. Uh, nine minutes. I have to take his picture too, you know. Oh, in that case, it's eight. Yeah. But it turned out really good. He was great. It was lots of fun. So that was three camera shoot. Um, I'm going to take you through one that I did with five. And that's Ricky Gervais, the comedian. That's his camera. Um, and that's on my 70 to 200 millimeter lens at 2.8. That's the medium close up for camera three. Uh, and we were just sort of like going back and forth between him. And then. In my shot, which is camera four. And that's my GoPro shot. I love to get the shots of them walking in the door for the handshake, which you only get at the Go uh, on the GoPro, because that's the camera. I just like turn it on when we start to make sure we pick up that stuff. And uh, you never know. As, uh, I did another interview with the director, Ron Howard. And at the end of the interview, he just started talking to me and asking me questions. All the other cameras had stopped rolling, but the GoPro was going. We got, it was great. It just you know, shows you another side of people before the cameras start going. Uh, Go the ahead. Question is that, uh, is the is the fish side adjustable, or is it? Yeah, it's adjustable. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the GoPro can be really wide, or it can come in a little bit. What does it cost? Uh, from two to four hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course, you know, you put them on a bike and a helmet, and surfboard, you put them on your dog, and yeah. I don't think it's going to work for your legacy videos, though. Unless, yeah, I did one once where I put it on the ceiling, and just for the fun of it. I don't know if you want to get the head. Uh, B-roll, everybody knows what B-roll is? OK, so the basic thing about interviews, and you're going to need it for the legacy videos, is you can only watch somebody yap, 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 yap for so long. So, because uh, it gets really monotonous. So you have, you have a, couple of issue, a couple of alternatives. One is to get B-roll. If I'm interviewing, tell me who you're going to interview. Is it grandfather, dad, 
um, somebody like that. Dad telling my, my life story. I want to see the pictures. I want to see the clips. I want to see everything on the wall, uh, his, his awards. I want to see it all. So while he's talking, I want to see you putting that stuff in. Uh, you, if you watch a 60 minutes piece really closely, and it's, 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 it's 20 minutes, right? Or is it 19.9? <laughs> How long is it? <laughs> OK. Of that interview, I, I would argue that two minutes of the time is them yapping. And the rest of it is visual storytelling. And that's what our job is as is, is video makers, is to be vi visual story, storytellers. So you know, for, for his instance, he's talking about an app that, that he's come out with. So we're showing the app. The, the, um, we're showing the screenshot. We're showing him playing with the app. For, for dad, I want to see pictures. I want to see clips. I want to see everything. And to make that even more fun, I would do it on multiple cameras. So I'd, I'd have one shot on dad, maybe one shot from, uh, from behind, one shot on the side. I would just pretty it up if you can do it. it you know, if you have the time and are willing to do it, it'll, it'll be more fun. I mean, you certainly could do me telling my story. But it's hard for 45 minutes to watch, right? When you're shooting a video, you know, where do you shoot, inside or outside? Inside is outside will give you nice light, because you have daylight, ambient light, shooting in the shade will be nice, but you have so much noise. So <coughs> that's an issue. It's always easier inside. But sometimes, like a room like this, is drab. No offense, folks, but it's a drab room. So you, you kind of want to pretty it up with lighting, if you can. OK, before we jump into video editing, any questions? Okay. With the, uh, We're gonna. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. With you, the with the with a piece of uh, equipment like the iPhone. Now I know that doesn't have a USB port or right. removable data. How right. Do you transfer that to your computer? Well, you plug it in. Uh, it does have US. It has a twenty oh, pin. It has a twenty pin connector. They'll go into your USB. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then you could. You, it, uh, it depends on the size of your iPhone. Uh, I have a sixteen. You may have a thirty-two. Um, it, you can get a bunch of stuff on there, and just keep throwing it out, throwing it on your computer, throwing it onto a drive. With an interview, how long can you stay with a talking head before it gets boring? And it depends on where the interview runs, because on PBS, the Charlie Rose show runs every night, and it's talking heads, it's nonstop talking heads. But what they do, which is so, similar to what I do, is they shoot on multiple camera. So Charlie Rose, Charlie Sheen, Charlie Rose, Charlie Sheen, wide shot of the two of them. Back and forth. Back, and that's how you, you break it up and make it less boring. Uh, for an interview, uh, you know, I, I just, you need, particularly on the web, uh, where the attention span is really bad, you need to move it around just to, to keep, keep people going, though. But if you have an interview with Obama uh, and you've got it, you can let, you can let the camera on him. I don't. OK. <laughs> but, but you keep it going really like just five seconds. It, it, sometimes it depends on the person. It depends on what my other shot is. I love going to a wide shot. And, and you know, if you, when you watch the, the, the news magazines, and they have an interview, and they've got, well, let's say Justin Bieber, there will always be the wide shot, the big wide shot with all the cameras and the lights every time. It's just like it's fun to see, and it shows you, you know, what, you, what you brought there. But uh, that, that's another way of just doing, you know, keeping, keeping the visuals going. You sort of like the sight line, like, yeah. If I'm not shooting you on my right, I should shoot me on his right? No, his left. It sort of depends on where we put the cameras. But if, if, if I'm sitting in front of you, I would like a camera on the side and then a camera to behind me and a camera behind you without it being visible. Okay. So just to show that I'm looking at you straight, straight ahead on. OK? Anybody else? OK, so let's talk about video editing. So who, who edits video in here? Everybody. OK, are we iMovie? Are we Final Cut? Are we Premiere? What are we using? Seven or 10? Seven. Ten? OK. I'm a bi as I said, oh, 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 here we are talking about iMovie. OK, so video editing, if you're not a video editor, all the pr you know, there's no reason not to be, because it's not going to cost you money iMovie is free on every new Mac, and is a pretty good program. 
I don't like to use it because I've graduated to Final Cut, but you can do a lot of really good stuff and learn on iMovie. Windows, in the Windows world, oh, whoops. In the Windows world, there's Windows Movie Maker, which is not one of my favorite programs. I wouldn't recommend using it. It's really, really poor. But my mother uses it in her knitting channel. Uh, but like I told you, she won't listen to me. Uh, Premiere Elements is my favorite program that I recommend if you're going to use Windows. You can pick it up for about $75. You can do everything that you want to do. Uh, Final Cut's better, but it's a great way to start editing videos. And Final Cut, as I told you, uh, Final Cut 10. The reason I like it is I can do multiple camera interviews on it, and it's really easy. The old Final Cut, you Final Cut 7 people, you have to wait for rendering. And it takes, and, and when you put in different formats, it, it goes crazy. Yeah, this one just sings. So, uh, and I churn out, I'm, I, I got it running every day, and I'm churning out a lot of videos. Oh, go ahead. With the Final Cut Pro, can, uh, the 10 version, can you actually do like a, send it to food cards for the rendering? Like send the it to what? Chart, like how Premiere Pro, it, it works off the graphics card for the rendering and everything's native. Is Final Cut 10 like that? I don't know how it works, but I know that um, when we shot the uh, Ed Burns video this morning, the guy who shot it with me was concerned that he had AVI videos and they weren't gonna, that Final Cut wasn't gonna like it. And I just threw it right in there and played it and it wasn't a problem. And on his Final Cut 7, he would have had to put it in an MPEG stream clip yeah, and he would have to, to, to convert it. Everything. Yeah, but I don't have to do that. Oh, okay. So that, it's beautiful for what I do. Like I told you, the um, multicam clips, we did one, two, three, four, five. So we did five cameras for Lewis Black last, last week, and that's the angle viewer. So everything's in there, and when I'm editing, I just, I do uh, camera two, camera three, camera two, camera one, and I just keep pressing the button like a TV director. It just changes it, and, and it's beautiful. And so that works really nice. Do you all understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. So um, when you put your videos up on YouTube and Vimeo, uh, people try to cut corners and they forget about their titles and their descriptions and their tags. Really important because you want to be found. And this is Google. And everything on Google is about your titles and descriptions. When you search on things for Google and something comes up, that's what you're reading. So you have to put a lot of thought into what you're putting out. So the, per the small business person here who's going to do the videos, um, what, kind, what, what, are we, what kind are we making? The small business person? OK, uh, Joe's Pizza. Jo OK, so Joe's Pizza. So you use a Joe's Pizza in New York City, uh, 34th Street, 9th Avenue. Uh, you know, you do, uh, throw in all that stuff. Uh, pizza, calzones, uh, pasta, and uh, it's in your description and in your tags. And a good title is Joe's Pizza, New York's Best, or New York's whatever, uh, 34th Street. What's this name? What is there a name for this neighborhood? What's the 34th Street area? The Miraculous, uh, what, what's it called, Gary? Hell's Kitchen. This is Hell's Kitchen? Yeah. Okay, so Joe's Pizza, Hell's Kitchen, New York, famous for Calzone or whatever. Uh, so you, because you want this stuff to be found in Google. That's very important. Uh, and that leads us to the Q&A. And uh, so I know you guys have had a lot of questions. We also have books available if anybody would like to buy the book. Discounted today, $25 for you guys, $5 off. And I will personally sign it. And you'll have all my information on how to email me with other questions. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.